good day and welcome back. So in our previous section, we were looking at arrays and using arrays, and that was section two. And we look at you, or you calculate the length of an array, you index into an array, and you know, pass in arrays as function parameters or even return type. So today, we're gonna move on to section three, and we're gonna look at how you traverse an array using the for loop, um, which was covered in chapter two on the Go Basic, and we're gonna also look at this function called a range function, which comes in Go. So let's jump in and go look at the code. So here I am in the code directory, and as you can see, I'm in chapter three arrays, and now we're gonna be looking at section three. So in section two, this is a quote from section two where we're talking about just using arrays and we learn about the length operator, I'm the length function, built-in function. And so I copied that same code, and this is where we're going to start with for chapter 3. But like I said, instead, we'll be looking at iteration. Using um, array iteration using um, for statement and range function, the built-in function. So let me think using um, demonstrate array iteration. Okay, all right, so here we have a test array with some um, data, um, something, and when we said print array before, um, print test result, um, you know, I don't care really for modifying the array, but okay, fine, we can do that. But if you look at how we print out as access each individual part of the array, is that we had to put the index there, and then we can just print the array because Go is smart enough to know what to do. But another thing we can do is actually just iterate over it. And so we remember the for loop. So let's revisit the for loop. So um, actually, um, okay, I'm going to take away the functions to simplify things for us. And let's revisit the for loop. So for for loop, we know how we can say for i gets equal to zero. So that's our simple initialization statement. Or we could say i is less than length of this test result array, for example. And then i plus plus, so increment, keep incrementing high. And we can say, you know, fmt, that print ln, and we can say, um, per, or print, we can just do print test result of i, and we put a space, okay? And maybe afterward we can say fmt that print lane. Okay, so this let's see what this is going to do. So let's go into section three here, and uh, section three, uh, section s zero three. All right, and so go run main, and so exactly what um, we expect. We print out each element and then a new line, okay? And if you don't believe that we're actually doing that, then I'll put an underscore in between, let that save, and then run it again, okay? I need it to save and run it again. And so there you can see the dashes in between. So Okay, so it looks better with the space um, than with dashes. Okay, so that's one way using a for loop to traverse an array, and so that accomplishes what we say using an array to iterate or traverse and um, using the for statement to traverse an array. We simply initialize the variable i to be zero. And then we say, if i is less than the length of the array, which we, we've introduced the length function before, then if that is true, go in and print test result of i, which is gonna be zero the first time. Then it's gonna finish this loop, go back up, test this, um, test again, and then um, finish this loop, increment this, so i is going to be 1, then go back and test, is i less than the length of the array? If that's true, come back in. At the end of the loop, it increments this part. So that's working fine. And so, but I said I told you this range function. And instead of writing this, you can say for i, and i is the index, v is the value, gets assigned, the output of range over test result. Now, this range built-in function is smart enough to know that oh, this is an array, and I'm going to iterate over it and return 
two values. It returned the index and the value. So it returns the index here, so like 0 and 12. So that's what it's going to return each time. Then 1 and 53. Then 2 and 86. Those are the two values it's returning. The first one being the index and the second one being the value at that um, location in the array, at that index. And so we can do fmt that print all in, for example, and we could print out i colon and then something like that. Let's do fat arrows and then uh, v. Okay. And so now we used both i and v. And if I can get that to save, oh, this needs to be capital P. Uh, once I get that to save and it's save, I'm going to run my code again. And you can see i and the index and the value, index and value, index and value. Okay. So um, now sometimes you might not be interested in both values. So let's say, for example, you don't care what the index is. You can use this place all the variables, right? If you remember, we did that earlier uh, when we talked about packages at the end of chapter two, or you can use um, underscore to say, I don't really care about that, um, that uh, package name, uh, but I still want to include it to, have to get the side effect, the init function. And so now we don't use we don't have an index because we don't want it. So that's it. It's very, very simple and straightforward. You can iterate over an array like this or use the nice easy way. I personally am, and if you look at most Go code, when they have an array to iterate over, they just use the range function. Uh, instead of you having to type this, it's, you don't have to worry about managing it. You don't have to calculate the length. Um, you know, so um, I think Go is smart enough to only call this function and calculate the results once, but still, um, to me, this is more compact and it's clear what is it that you're trying to do. You're trying to range over these, this, this array. All right, so that was it um, for how to iterate over an array with for and range. Um, hope you get to practice it. Um, thanks for your time. Keep sub um, spreading the word. Thanks to those of you who subscribe and I appreciate you taking the time to come and look at the videos and giving feedback. So please continue to do that. Take care.